Okay, welcome everyone. So the, tonight we're doing class number 29, Baruch Hashem. And uh, before we get started, let's get grounded. Let's see where we are. Our moods, our thoughts, where we're coming from. What did your day look like? Are you driving in the car? Just to be aware, where are you? And then we always go inwards. How are you feeling? Your body, any sensation, any stress, anything that comes up. Just to become aware, your shoulders, maybe your cheeks, your stomach, your feet, just to see where am I and what's going on? How am I feeling? Beautiful. You can put into the chat, let me know if you're in a place of negativity, that's an N, or positivity, that's a P, or maybe two Ns for neutral. I just didn't think about it too much. It's just N, N, just neutral. I am where I am. Beautiful. So as usual, we always have both. And uh, that's, that's the first uh, awareness, very important to understand that other people are in different places. And we're not always in the same place. Okay. Yes, you can put in any feelings, any feelings that you have, you can put into the chat. Good. Where would you put anxious? Positive or negative? Well, like we discussed, we don't have to call it positive or negative. It just is. If you feel anxious, you will feel anxious. How does that sound? And you can put a smile, it might help. So here we go. So where are we? It's, it's very good to reflect, take time off, and that's what we're doing over here, to see where we are on this journey. A lot of information, getting, becoming aware of ourselves, our surroundings, how we feel, what makes us feel and what, you know, certain places, certain people, certain ideas, thoughts, and we're becoming aware. And the journey is not always that comfortable. Like we just discussed many times, that's the reason why we try to have a routine, just be busy, just keep on going. Because if we stop and start reflecting, well, certain things can come up, things in the past, certain beliefs about ourselves come up. And that's exactly what we're running away from. And here we are trying to bring you back into the moment, just to be there, to breathe, and obviously, all of these things slowly come up. So this is part of the journey. There are ups and downs and very important. When you find yourself in a place that you don't like the way it feels, so you would want to run back. Let me just continue. Let me not think about it. But we're trying to just be there. And that's all we're going to be learning tonight. A little bit of Compassion. So, what is compassion? Being able to be there to understand somebody else's emotions, understand the emotional state of another person and your own. So, that's self compassion. When it comes to other people, it's much easier to understand, much easier to practice, to be there for that person. To understand somebody else is going through a, a difficult time in their life. And they reach out to you, they wanna talk about it, and you're there, you're listening. Like we discussed many times, you're not coming up with any solutions. It's hard and you're listening. And they would wish if you would have a solution like right now, a button that can change the whole situation. We would all wish to have that. But 
not always do we have that, and usually we don't. So if they reach out, they want you to be there. So that's to be compassionate, understand the emotions the other person is going through. And we understood a little bit um, when we discussed the inner child, that when a child comes to you and wants to share, so like we mentioned, first of all, if the child wants to share, that's amazing how many of us, uh, depending everybody in their story, what, at what age we decided no one understands, no reason to share, I'll just take care of it by myself, and we suppress it. So this itself that the child wants to share, be there. And don't come up with solutions, even though we want to give a solution right away because we're very solution oriented. Just we want to tell them what to do. When they get that cut, just take that bandaid. But then they get the message that their emotions, their feelings, that they're, they're feeling is not valid. So eventually they get the message, okay, next time just go straight. Well, why are you coming to me? Why are you crying? Why are you fetching? You know, there's emotions there that we want to be there. Again, it doesn't have to be for very long, but that little space, understand them and then go to the solution. We have to give them that space. So that's where we are with ourselves also. When we find ourselves on a low, find yourself in a place that you don't like the way it feels, you have certain thoughts or anxiety, worries about whatever it is. So you, you wanna run away from it. You don't wanna listen, what's going on? You don't wanna sit there, it's hard. And it's much harder to do it for ourselves. So that's what we have to learn because being part of the, being on this journey is being able to stay there. And we have to learn the skills, how to stay there, how to experience. And uh, we've discussed this in the past. And like I always mentioned, for those who are here the first time, the recordings are available on menachembernfeld.com on the top left. And I know last week's recording is not up yet. Sorry for that. Imit Hashem will put it up. But over there, we have the recordings of the past weeks where we have that buildup that we're working on until where we are tonight. So really, this compassion, we need to learn the skill of self-compassion right in the beginning. Because if I'm going to try to bring you back into the room, bring you back home, bring you back to yourself and just help you stay there. We need to be able to learn how, how to stay there. And this is part of experiencing, right? This is what we've learned to be able to experience life. The only time we're actually living is in the now. Whatever happened, happened, and the future hasn't happened yet. So where are we? We're here in this moment, present. So we have to start learning how to live our life. That means in the now. So we're learning how to stay here, be mindful. What do I feel? Where am I? And we start to experience. We become grounded. We're in the here in the now and whatever it is it is it's it can be very hard because you want you're in the middle of doing things there's so many things you have to do you'll get to do it but you need some time off to just experience to be there and to be able to tell yourself you're okay i'm okay where i am now and whatever i'm feeling i am you're what Nothing, I am, I am. I don't need to add anything to it. It's just, I am here, I'm okay in the now, and we experience. So obviously, if we're gonna start experiencing, we're gonna experience whatever it is. For some, it's positive, for some, it's negative. Again, we don't have to call it positive or negative, we can call it whatever it is. If you feel anxious, is that positive or negative? It's nothing. It's just you feel anxious. Our mind does take it to the next level. And that's one of the reasons why 
self-compassion can be much harder than helping somebody else. Because when that happens to ourselves, we're hard on ourselves. Number one, you know, it feels like self-pity. Why should I, why should I have that pity on myself, sit with my problems? Why should I do that? I don't want to have self-pity. Or we tell ourselves, well, yeah, you're the one who did it. I mean, <laughs> all the problems, you got yourself into it. So that's negative, being hard on ourselves. Or you might say, sometimes it's a secondary emotion. You find yourself angry. And then you're all upset and anxious that you're angry. Because, well, I've learned all of these skills. Why am I angry? You know, it's not me. It's not my thoughts. It's something out of me. Why am I angry? And that gets us even more anxious. So could you just stop and be okay that you're whatever you're feeling? It's like when somebody shares with you, I feel I'm very upset. I'm very anxious. And tell them why. Tell me more. Wow. That's it. You don't tell them, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's because of your fault. You don't tell them that. So why is it when we, when it's not ourselves, sometimes we're hard on ourselves? And if we're going to be hard on ourselves, we're not going to be able to be present in the moment and uh, to learn the skills that we're learning here. Because obviously you want to run away from it. It's very uncomfortable to be in those situations. If you can't, imagine going to a friend and they start telling you, yes, it's your fault. What do you mean? And you're like, oops, sorry, I'm not calling you again. <laughs> so if you do it to yourself, you're going to run away and keep yourself busy and obviously go on and on and on because you don't want to think about where you are because negative stuff come up. Many people, when they hear me talking, they say, Menachem, you know, you talk a lot about negativity. Why can't you be a little bit more positive? You know, life is good. It's okay. Just enjoy life. I agree. Yes, we need to build up the positivity also. But I'm a real believer in learning how to stay with whatever comes up. And many times it's negative and very negative. So we're learning the skills to be able to stay there with ourselves as a good friend. So we can stay wherever it is, whatever comes up, whatever we feel. And like we discussed, emotions, emotions don't last for too long. They say, they say, a study says that it could last between 60 seconds and 90 seconds, but sometimes it does last a little bit longer. Again, everybody has their experiences. But the idea is, it's only if you can, if you could focus on it. Many people would say, why are you focusing on the negativity? Right? So they probably mean walking around talking about the negative, feeling negative all day. So that's not what we're discussing. What we're discussing is when you do feel something come up, some negative, Instead of saying, it's fine, it's fine, it doesn't bother me. Being able to sit down, take a few minutes, take a deep breath, and yes, we are going to focus on that negative, what's coming up. And the reason why we're going to do that is so it can, we can let it go. The only way we'll be able to let it go, those negative emotions, is if we can sit with it. Because if you suppress it, you know what happens? You put it into that box and you push it in, you lock it and you hope it doesn't come out, but it doesn't last. Eventually it comes out. Eventually the negativity comes out. It can be um, on a coworker when you're in a bad mood and you don't know why, or it could be physically. Some people have physical, um, whatever, you know, it could be even back pain. Whatever pain comes up, it can be coming from suppressed emotions. So what we do is we do take some time to sit down and focus. What am I feeling now? What are my thoughts? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That thing bothers me. Wow. And you take a deep breath. And to be able to, to feel that, you have to have that compassion. Don't knock yourself. Don't be hard on yourself because you're just not gonna continue letting it go. If you can focus on it, be there, understand like a good friend, understand this is how I feel, but I don't wanna feel this way. 
I hear. I'm working on this for such a long time. When is this going to go already? I can't, I can't. I'm so upset. Wow, I hear. And many people are not used to it. They're like, okay, okay, fine. Okay, no, no, no. Hey, 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 relax. Take a deep breath. Learn to be able to sit there. And that's how we release the emotions. That's how we can let it go. Versus not thinking about it, pushing it away, staying busy, keeping on on the rat race, because I don't want to focus on the negativity. So again, yes, we are need to build, we do need to build up our positive gratitude, feel good of, of life, build up the grateful things and sit and feel that too, 100%. 100%, I'm not denying that. But to be able to walk around and say, no, I'm, I'm, I'm always positive, I'm always positive, I'm always positive, because there are certain things in your life that you don't want to focus on, that's suppressing. And you're, you're, you're pushing it down, locking it up, hoping it's not going to come out. But the way to release it is by letting it in, like the waves. Let it in and let it go. Let it in and let it go. And if you're on this journey, sometimes it could be hard. You find yourself in a... In the low, there's highs and lows. Highs and lows, and let the low come in. Welcome it, embrace it, be there. And we can only do that with self-compassion, just like a friend. Just the same way you would listen to a friend. Be able to listen to yourself. Sometimes it's easier to write it down. Just write your thoughts, what's going on, what's bothering you but just be there and experience. This is what we're discussing, to experience. So this is a little bit um, compassion. I would ask you, um, what are the thoughts that come up when you do find yourself that you made a mistake or you are in a bad mood? If you can share in the chat, I would appreciate it. When you find yourself anxious in a bad mood or things are not working out, what are those thoughts that come up when you find yourself angry, upset, you're learning a certain skill and for some reason it's not working. What, what, what comes up? What are the thoughts? How do you talk to yourself? And what we need to do is change. Stop to punish ourselves when we make a mistake. Understand that this is how things work. We do make mistakes. I forgot to mention, yes, we are human. Sorry. We are human and we make mistakes. Even, we've, even if we have discussed it before and we want, you know, we want to be better, which is amazing, but we found ourselves making a mistake again. What's that thought that comes into your mind? Yeah, that you can't handle it, that it's too much. It makes you upset. Exactly. So become aware of those thoughts and practice to forgive yourself. Yes, you made a mistake. I'm not happy about it. True. That's it. Stay there. Stop to punish yourself. Number two is to be able to have a growth mindset. Understand this is part of growth. Everything we're discussing here is part of our journey. And we might think, you know, I'm already who I am, but... Our kids, let the kids make mistakes. Let them uh, figure things out. Don't always give them the solution. Let them feel a little bit ups and downs because this is what we're discussing. Many of us, when we were young, well, you know, the way our, our parents reacted to certain things, that's the mindset that we get. But we want to help others, ourselves, and our kids to experience but I don't like it. That's true. Sometimes we don't like it. Another thing is like we discussed expressing gratitude. We do want to build, we do want to build the, the positive side because only to focus on negative is not going to work. We need both. Um, to come up with a positive affirmation. And this I got from Dr. Christine Neff. She's very big in uh, self-compassion. And these are the words she came up. You can come up with the own words. You tell, you, you tell yourself, this is a time of suffering. I don't feel good. 
and suffering is part of life. May I be kind to myself this moment. May I give myself the compassion I need. That's it. If you say that or whatever works, it makes a difference. It makes a difference of how you feel. And when you do find yourself in that low, you want to run away from it. You have something to tell yourself when you say it over. And it tells you the message that it's okay. I want to end tonight with an exercise called the self-compassion break. Now, it can be done two ways. Number one, if you find yourself in a low, in a negative place, and you're experiencing it, instead of running away, you do this exercise. Or number two, you can put on a, time, a timer. Make your phone ring three times a day. And when it rings, you do this exercise. And here, here is how it goes. So when the alarm goes off, you take some time off, find a quiet place where you can sit, where it's safe, nobody's gonna bother you. Some people, they don't have it. And sometimes it can be only in the bathroom because wherever they are, people are around, take, you know, busy, need them. Find two, three minutes where you can close your eyes. And with your eyes closed, you put your hands on your heart. Let them rest flat on your chest. And you take deep, three deep breaths. And you can even do it now while you're listening to me. Deep breath. And even by the first one, you feel relaxed. And another one. Let everything loose. Let yourself relax. Let your stomach expand, beautiful. And then you become aware of what is it that you're struggling with? What's, what's the overwhelm? What are the thoughts? And listen to it. And then you can offer yourself just some words of support, like you would tell a friend, a little bit of compassion, that you would tell somebody that you love and tell it to yourself as if you're talking to a friend. Just be there no matter what's going on, no matter what's coming up and no matter what you're feeling. Just take a deep breath. You can sit and just keep up with the breathing. Before you end the practice, you take a few minutes or a few seconds silently and you say, I honor and support myself. I love and accept myself. I practice peace and patience. I am worthy of my own compassion and kindness. You can say it as many times as you want. And you can probably stay there as long as you want if there aren't people that need you or you have to go back to work. If you have the time off, you can stay there. But if not, even doing this for three minutes, three times a day will make a difference. A good idea is to, to write down what comes up just to be aware of what's going on. And that's how we become more aware and we start experiencing what's going on and being able to give ourselves the compassion we need so we don't have to run away from it so that we can let it go, release and be in the moment, whatever it is. Beautiful. Whatever came up, I know there are some people, and when I started this work, it was hard for me to believe these things. You know, tell myself, I love and accept myself. It sounds, it's funny. And it's good awareness. What comes up when you hear these things? I am worthy of my own compassion. You know, feelings come up. If you can take it in, beautiful. If there's some resistance, become aware of it. Just become aware. So that's it for tonight. You can practice whenever it comes up. Any questions you can put in the chat. I do want to thank all of those that sent feedback. That sent, you can send uh, an email, 
feedback, coachmenachem at gmail.com. And very interesting feedback. Many of you had moments that needed to relax and you were listening to the three minute meditation affirmations and it works. That's right. What I would say is don't wait for those you know, the negative moments. Try to do it more often. Give yourself what you need. Give yourself some space. Good question. If you have to do it every uh, the same time, again, it is a good idea to put it into the routine, to put it into your routine so that it happens. You'll see if it's not part of your day, it's hard. Now here, here I am, I'm talking about our routine stopping our routine and I'm telling you to put things in your routine. Yes, because we do have a routine. And when I tell you to stop routine, I don't mean you shouldn't have any routine. Yes, it's very healthy to have routine and start putting in some uh, positive moments, some time to stop in your routine. So that yes, we are busy, we are running, but we wanna learn how to take a few moments every day, pull back, short stop, take a deep breath and say, where am I? What am I feeling? Um, for the recordings, you can find them um, again, amanachenburnfeld.com. On the top left, the recordings are there, the affirmations are there. And maybe I will send them in the email that I send out. For those who want to be part of the email, you can send me an email, coachmanachemgmail.com, and I'll add you. So I'll send out those affirmations. Thank you very much for being here tonight. For, now thank yourself for giving yourself some time off, some time for yourself, even you're probably busy and there's a lot going on, to be able to stop and give yourself the time so that you can rejuvenate and go back to what you need to do, more mindful, more present, and start experiencing whatever it is, yes. Build up the positive and look at the negative. That's how it works. Thank you very much. Have a great night and a great week. And we'll see you Hashem, next week, Wednesday night at 10 o'clock. Oh, sorry, at nine o'clock.